Rabbits, it's Trixie, and as you can judge by the rings under my eyes, I didn't sleep much last night. That's because I basically spent the whole time searching for flats. Yes, you heard right. Eric, the baby bunny and I are planning on moving to a new place soon. As for now, I will not go into too much detail about why we move or where we move. You will get to know at some point, just give us a little bit of time. I don't know how many times in your life you already had to search for a new flat. It is definitely an adventure. And I really wonder whether you can relate when I say that I find searching flats addictive. When I have to search for a new place, I become a maniac. I want to find this one perfect place and I feel I'm just one click away from finding this beautiful house that's just perfect for our family. And then hour after hour passes and nothing happens. One place looks shittier than the other and you get really frustrated. Also, I have found some pretty strange things when searching for a flat in Germany. And it was particularly interesting to see Eric's reaction as a Venezuelan towards it. How can they not have this and that? How is that so expensive? Cannot we just tear down that wall there? Ah, uh, sure. The different cultures caused some confusion once again. So in today's video, I want to list some very strange things I noticed while on search for a flat in Germany. I want to share my thoughts because I bet that most of you can relate. And if you are a foreigner coming to Germany, at least you know what you have to expect. Finding the perfect flat in Germany is not that easy. And here is what may happen to you. First up, imagine that you're looking at a flat in a huge building, so it's just one of many apartments. The building appears pretty new and modern, so what would you expect to be there? An elevator, right? But you keep reading the description and the only thing it says is that you can reach your flat using the staircase. There is no elevator. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I could just use my jog ears and fly there, enter through the window. But what about all the other people? Why Germany? Why is there no elevator when you build a huge house with a lot of different floors? Just imagine climbing all these stairs with your grocery, with a kid. That's impossible. And I really don't understand. Next up, if you don't want to move into a building complex, you will most likely try to find a house. And houses in Germany mostly have this kind of rooftop. You know, like a triangle. And then you see this amazing flat. It's in the upper floor and it says 200 square meters of space. Just think of all the furniture you can put there, how many friends you would fit in that house. Well, and then you notice the catch. Since you are basically living in the attic, due to the roof, the rooms look like this. So instead of having a huge living room with lots of space, you basically end up with a narrow corridor. I mean, what kind of furniture are you supposed to put there? Have you ever seen a wardrobe that looks like this? Or are you gonna put your bed there and always hit your head when you get up in the morning? Definitely not a place for us either. And then there are these flats and houses that just look gorgeous. They are perfect and you're in love with them on the first glance. And the problem is really not the place, it's the person that owns the place. Four rooms, affordable rent, and then it says in the description, but no kids. But why not? This is so weird. The place you're trying to sell is perfect for children. What are you thinking that these kids will do to your place? Tear down the wallpaper and draw with pencils on the walls? Well, yeah, that may actually happen. But you know, kids are life. They're a happiness. And I just don't understand. Why not make a family happy? I mean, you're gonna meet these people before they move in. So get to know them. Notice that kids are not cholera. Find out that they are awesome people and then let them live there. And believe it or not, I've actually read that pretty often. It's not just one house in a hundred, it's, I don't know, one house in ten that says no kids? Oh, and then there is this other thing that many German house owners seem to be super scared of. I'm gonna say it very quietly to not frighten anybody here. Pets. Sometimes when you take a closer look at a flat, you already see it in the list. Haustiere, Nein! And I mean, I kinda understand, but on the other hand, if the house has a huge garden and there's a forest nearby, why not have a cat or a small dog? Actually, at some point, I would like to have pets again, so that's a bit of a bummer. And again, just get to know the people that are gonna move in. Ask them to make it a small dog, if they want to have one. I mean, it doesn't have to be a fluff ball like this, but a little cute dog that makes everyone happy. 
But yeah, I guess some people are just different. I love pets, I've always loved pets, so this is my attitude towards them. So when I scroll down and the description says, no pets, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, I kind of dislike the person owning the place already and that's never a good start. Another oddity that I found about German flats is that some of them have the weirdest layouts. You just look at the picture and you're like, okay, from this room you enter this room and the kitchen connects with the bathroom. So every time I want to get food from the kitchen into the dining room, I have to pass by the toilet. Also, the distribution of rooms is just questionable sometimes. I've looked at a flat that looked like this. The bathroom was literally half of the flat. What on earth am I supposed to do with such a huge bathroom? Breed seals in the bathtub? Leading me to the next aspect, a word that I cannot say, bathtubs. Ba bath tops. Bath <laughs> stops. This is something that grinds my gears. You look at a flat, it's amazing, but it has no shower. I like to take baths from time to time, but mostly I shower. And who doesn't? Don't most people shower instead of taking a bath every time? But in around half of all the flats I looked at, there is a bathtub only. No shower. Why? But you know, at least you have a place to wash yourself. Things get even stranger when it comes to my next point. Many flats don't have a kitchen. You just see some tubes and cables coming out of the wall and, well, the rest is your job. And yeah, okay, I guess you can say that a kitchen is also nothing else but furniture, but I don't know, I'm just not used to buying a new kitchen for a flat. And also when you move out, then you have to take it with you again or find somebody to pay you for it or yeah. I kind of expect a kitchen to be part of a new flat that I move in. Am I a stupid spoiled brat? You tell me. Still, all of the things I just told you are not that bad. You can still scroll through all the pictures and, you know, try to figure out if that's a place that you would like. But many times there are no pictures. In our modern times where you look for a flat online, you kind of expect there to be pictures, don't you? I mean, if there aren't any pictures, I take that as a bad sign. What are these people trying to hide? It's what I'm always thinking. I'm not thinking, oh, that place must be nice. There's no need for pictures. Let's just have a look. Because we have so much time. And if it's just one day that we waste looking at a flat that's totally not suitable for us, who cares? So please just put some pictures there because I'm always expecting bad things if there aren't any. It's especially frustrating when everything else looks perfect. You know, all the data you can find is something that would be suitable for us. But there are no pictures, so Am I gonna risk it or am I just gonna skip it? Next up, our little family has one car. So of course we also need a parking spot or a garage. Well, here comes the catch that I will never understand. Most places have a parking spot or a spot in a garage included. And that's great, but then you check the price for it. I would say that everything up to 60 euros is still bearable, but the latest flats I looked at said it's an extra 100 euros. 100 euros for a parking spot? Then I can just leave my car outside and buy a new one when it's broken. That's just crazy and it's such a bummer when you read it. Also, usually, even if you don't have a car, you have to pay for this parking spot. In general, whenever you look at a flat, you should read everything that it says in the description, because there are some hidden things sometimes that may make you go, okay... For example, it says that when you move in, you have to pay 5,000 euros for the kitchen that is already there. Just gonna put this little detail in a sentence right here. 5,000 euros. Boop, 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 boop. 5,000 euros? How? Or it says that the flat is right next to the train station. But you know what? It doesn't only say, well, the flat is next to the train station, but it's not that loud, you know, it's fine, it's fine. They're just snuck into the description in the most hilarious and euphemistic ways. Since the flat is just 10 meters away from the train station, trains pass by every full hour, so you will always know what time it is without the need of a cuckoo clock. Yeah, and it sucks. You may have forgotten about that part. Also, nowadays, searching for a flat kind of feels like applying for a job. They want to know everything about you. Information on your salary, whether or not you are in debt or anything, your working contract, a copy of your ID, and of course, blood of a female virgin on her period. For a two-room flat that looks super filthy. Give us everything you have and we may consider you. 
and then hey you are lucky you get an appointment you go there and there are 25 strangers with you who all think that they would be the only ones coming to this place today thank you for telling me in advance but there is also the other extreme from flats with no shower and no kitchen to flats with too much furniture möblierte wohnungen already furnished places i can totally see the advantage of this when you come from another place maybe from far away you don't necessarily want to take all your old furniture with you so it may come in handy that all the furniture is already there you don't have to do anything well if there wasn't this one big problem the furniture is ugly as f the couch looks like cardboard boxes with a blanket thrown over them the shelves and tables and carpets look like I don't even know what they look like. Time traveling, gone wrong, furniture edition. Nothing fits together, like style-wise. But of course you have to accept this furniture to rent this place. So you are pretty much screwed. All right, rabbits. I have to say, I feel so much better now that I vented a little bit. I haven't even noticed how much aggression and frustration has been boiling up inside of me, so it was great to share these experiences with you. What do you think about all these things I just mentioned? Am I just crazy or super picky? Or do these struggles also grind your gears? What other things do you find annoying about finding a flat in Germany? And if you are a foreigner, what is the weirdest thing that happened to you while on search for a flat? I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me really, really happy. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and here is a video that you should definitely check out as well. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this and if you want to support my channel even more you can also find me on Patreon. Your help there would mean so so much to me. Please cross your fingers that Eric and I will find the perfect flat very very soon. I wish you all a wonderful day and hopefully until next time. Bye!